Hi everyone, Brybone here, back with another video. Today, we're going to take another look at Active Directory Certificate Services. I still find this is a problem in many of my customers, so I want to address it one more time, but this time I'm going to show you how to do it in an easier fashion. Before my previous Active Directory Certificate Services video, I showed you four different tools that you had to go through to exploit ESC8. Today we're going to do it with two tools, and it works. It's really cool. So, what is ESC8 though? ESC8 is a it's a naming convention for one of the certificate authority attack types. Uh, in particular, this one is granting a certificate on a template that doesn't basically specify the username. So you are getting a certificate that you should not be able to get, right? So basically I'm taking the hash of a domain controller, I'm relaying it, and I'm getting a certificate of that domain controller, then I am using that authentication to then take over the domain. This one is a full domain compromise and it's quite easy to pull off now, especially with two tools. Now, if you'd like more information on this, the, the original paper was written by Will Schroeder. You can take a look at that. Um, but Microsoft also has some good recommendations here on preventing this attack. If you haven't done this, you really should. Take NTLM off of the IIS server that is doing your certificate authority. The, the one that is hosting your cert finish file, you need to make sure that you can't relay NTLM to that. That just basically stops this attack dead and it stops some of the older attacks like Pettipotum as well. Just stops them dead. Um, also, watching your certificate authority, making sure your certificate authority is logging to your SIM and that you have alerts around your certificate authority for the granting of certificates that you don't expect, that is something very, very important to do. Now, we're going to do this with two tools. One of them you have seen me use in other videos. One of my new favorites is NetExec. NetExec is the successor to CrackMap Exec. It has a bunch of modules in it and it has become one of the just go-to things for me because it can do so many different things. It can do AS rep roasting, Kerber roasting. Uh, you can exploit ESC8, which we're going to do today. You can get LDAP signing information. You can do Bloodhound ingester stuff. It's really amazing how much they've put into this tool. And it is one tool. You don't have 30 different tools to do this now. So it, it's made things much nicer. And you'll see me continue to use this in videos as we go forward. But let's take a look at how we exploit ESC8. So we'll start with our Kali box over here and we're gonna start with NTLM Relay X. NTLM Relay X is the only tool we will need outside of NetExec for this video. Still the gold standard in relaying, uh, we should be able to easily relay our domain controller hash to our certificate authority. And I'll just paste this in, as you can see, we're using impacket ntlm relay x You can run NTLM Relay X any way you know how. You can run it from Python. You can do however you want. Just make sure that it's running and that it will do the relay. You want to then point it at the cert serve cert finish.asp on the Active Directory Certificate Services server. How do you find certificate authorities within Active Directory? LDAP. NetExec can find them for you. If we look back over here, you can do NXC LDAP, give it the IP, a user password, and an M80CS, and it will find these enrollment servers for you so you can find your target that way. Now, we're going to go ahead and run this. We're just doing uh, SMB support, ADCS template, and then we're going to go after the domain controller template because we know that's weak, right? So we'll start our relay, and we can see our relay is working. Now we're going to come over here to NetExec, and we're going to do our first netexec command. In my original video, we used Coercer. Coercer was a, is a great tool, but it's another tool that I would have to use. Now I can do the coercion right from netexec. So we'll do the coercion. We will coerce the domain controller into handing its NTLM v2 hash, which is not the NT hash, not the one that's stored in memory, but the one that it would pass across the network back to my relay. So we'll do netexec SMB. We're going to connect with just Clint's account. He's a low level user. It could be any user in the domain. It does not have to be a privileged user. You just need to be able to authenticate. 
give it the domain. We're telling it Coerce Plus is the module here, and it will test a whole bunch of different coercion techniques. And then our listener is our NTLM relay IP. So if you're doing your NTLM relay on a different box, you want to give it a different IP. But in this case, I'm doing it right here where we can see it. So we'll go ahead and we'll run this. And we can see coercion is happening. And it says exploit success on three of these. So if we come over here and everything worked right, we should have a certificate. Sometimes you have to do this a couple of times, but in this case, we were successful. We have a 2016 lab DC PFX. We also have the username that was successful. Look right here. Now we need this for later steps in the attack, right? So did our attack work? Do we know that the certificate will work? So now what we're going to do is we're going to test the certificate against the account that we know it should have logged into, right? So this is the account that is the domain controller machine account. So I uh, just realized this gray stuff at the end is not the command. Uh, this is just from when I entered it earlier, it remembers it. But what I'm doing is I'm doing netexec SMB 192.168.136.10. I'm doing the PFX cert. This is the cert location that it just created over here from NTLM Relay X. Then the user, the user is this 2016 lab DC, I do not need the domain. Don't need the domain. And then I just enter this. And now sometimes I find that with NetExec, you got to try it a couple times. I don't know why, but I've had to try things a couple times. It, it seems to work on second or third try. Notice it just worked here. So we now have the hash of the domain controller machine account. Now, if I want to set up DC sync here with a different tool when the impact tools, I can certainly do so, or I can just continue down the path here with NetExec. I don't really have to do anything else, right? If I want a user out of Active Directory and I want their hash, I now can just go selectively get it. DC sync is pretty noisy at times. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go get the NTDS user administrator. Right. In some environments, it's still available. If you know the name of a domain admin, you can go after them. It'll give you whatever hash you want because you're authenticating as the machine account of the domain controller. So we'll hit enter here. And there we go. We now have the hash of the administrator account. So I can get whatever I want. Let's try it again with a different account. Maybe we'll try the Caribbean TGT account. We could set up, we could set up a golden ticket. And sometimes you have to run it a couple of times. And there it is. There's the KRB TGT account. That's God mode for Active Directory, right? So at this point, you have complete compromise. Now, if you want to verify this, once you have these hashes, you can use NetExec one more time. And we'll just verify the administrator account. So I'll just do, I'm going to paste this. Well, actually, let me clear this out and then I'll paste in our final command here. And our final command is just typical crack map exact syntax to use SMB. So we'll do clear here. Uh, we'll copy this over. This is net exec. You just do SMB, give it the target, the username, and then the hash, right? So it's simple, pass the hash. And there we go, pwned. So I have complete control of the domain controller. I can do whatever I want to it at this point. I could even, you know, set it up to where I could log into it. Right. I could now if you're going to do something like RDP, you have to turn off restricted admin, which I showed in the previous videos how to do. So if you turn off restricted admin, you can then set up RDP to go into the domain controller with just the hash or you can crack the hash. Right. Take your pick. At this point, you have complete control of the domain. OK, so we've taken over our domain with ECS8. E ESC8, excuse me. What we need to do now is detect it, right? We got to do the purple team here. We got to detect the other side, right? How do we prevent this? Well, I told you how to prevent it by removing NTLM from your IIS server. How to detect it? There's two easy ways. You can detect multiple stages here, right? So as long as your certificate authority is logging to SIM, which you need to make sure your certificate authority is logging to SIM, it is off by default, okay? 
Your certificate authority will not log successful certificate grants unless you turn it on. So I highly recommend you do that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look for a certificate granted to a specific thing. In this case, I'm going to look for anything with DC in the name. So I'll do event code 4887, which is a successful certificate grant, and win log event subject name containing DC. And you match this to whatever's in your environment. So if I run this, I take a look at this particular certificate. We can see certificated services approved a certificate request and issued a certificate. The requester was the domain controller. Now, what you don't get here is the requester IP, right? You get that the certificate services issued a certificate to a domain controller when it shouldn't have happened. So what you would do in this case is you would realize this happened and go quickly invalidate this. If you know when your domain controller certificates are expiring, you can go quickly invalidate this particular certificate request. This log doesn't have a lot of information in it. It's just simply, hey, we saw this request come in. Now we can look through here and you can see there's no indication of the IP address. Now, if the adversary uses this certificate for authentication, that's when you have them, right? So the next step here is you would look for the usage of this certificate. When a certificate is used for authentication, you would look for event code 4768, which is a Kerberos authentication. And then you're going to look for when log event data cert serial number just simply to exist. Three fields are blank in 4768 unless you're authenticating with a certificate. When you authenticate with a certificate, those fields are not blank. So if we look here, you can see the certificate serial number is not blank and the certificate thumbprint is not blank. If we simply search 4768 without any of these, we'll just pick one here. Hold on. It's not closing out, so let me close this window real quick and then we'll pick another one. And we can see, well, of course, that's the one, but we'll scroll through these until we find one that doesn't have a certificate. Of course, I've been doing this here in my lab. So there's one right now. This is a normal authentication. So you see the certificate issuer name, the certificate serial number, and the certificate thumbprint are all blank. So this is how you detect a certificate being used against your environment. Now, a couple of false positives that happen here quite readily. Windows Hello. Windows Hello will false positive this. If you have smart cards, nope, not going to work for you because you're doing certificate authentication all the time, right? That's normal for your environment. You Got to know normal to find abnormal. So if you're always authenticating with certificates, yeah, this isn't going to work. Lock down your servers. All right. So I've given you the red. I've given you the blue, the, blue, the full purple view. And that's all I've got for you this week. Thanks once again. Thanks for watching and hack the planet to defend better.